Hello and welcome to the Cheeky Science Show. In this video, we'll look at can your proteome predict your biological age? And in particular, we'll look at this Nature Medicine paper here and discuss how the human plasma proteome seems to change during lifespan. Now, I mention ageing a lot on this channel, as you can see from my previous videos, which you should check out by the way. But the thing is, ageing is a predominant risk factor for several chronic diseases that limit health span. And one recurring point that I often make is that to better understand the aging process, we really need to have biomarkers to identify the severity of the aging process. And so in a previous video, we looked at how epigenetic marks could be used as a biomarker for biological age. But the thing is with biomarkers, we need something that is going to be predictive, but also something that can be easily taken from patients, causing minimal harm and also containing lots of useful information. So besides epigenetics, the proteome is a good source of information because proteins are often direct regulators of cellular processes and pathways. Blood samples would be good since they are often taken from patients and we make more blood cells on a daily basis and we don't really notice the effect besides feeling a little bit lightheaded if we've donated blood. But are there useful biomarkers for ageing in the blood? Well, blood contains proteins that come from cells and different tissues in the body, so they actually contain a wealth of information, but is this information relevant and can it be related to ageing? So as I said in the opening, in this video we'll look at this nature paper here, where they have looked at the human plasma proteome and how it changes during lifespan, and so the, the plasma is just the soluble fraction of blood. And so this paper noticed that, well their main conclusion is that there's these undulating changes. So Undulating is an interesting word, or at least a word I don't use very often, so we had to look it up. But according to uh, dictionary.com, it can be used in such contexts such as the dancer undulated her hips, or the flag undulates in the breeze. And um, another example I quite liked was, there were stomachs taut and flat, but also undulating bellies, soft and bloated from the be breakfast buffet. But um, end of English lesson for today and back to the science lesson. Hopefully by the end of this video you'll be happy to use the words undulating in the context of the aging human plasma proteome. So besides the blood containing proteins, where did the idea for this paper come from? Well previous research from the lab that also published this paper, whereby they fused the circulatory systems of young and old mice for a process known as heterochronic parabiosis, showed that when they did this, the aging phenotypes of the old mouse seem to reverse. So this includes rejuvenation of liver, lung, heart, and bone tissue. And one factor in particular that was thought to be involved in this rejuvenation process was GDF11, which was in high levels in the young mice. But in addition to there being potential good factors, are there also bad factors in the old mice? For example, when old mouse plasma was injected into young mice, they saw an acceleration of brain aging. So all in all, these kind of these experiments have shown that there's something in the blood. So what information can we get from the blood and relate that to aging processes? All right, so back to the Nature paper. So in this study, they took 4,263 individuals that had ages from 18 to 95 years old and they analysed the proteome of the plasma samples. So how do you go about detecting the protein in the samples? So in this study, the team used the SOMA-SCAN Aptima technology. So Aptimas are a fancy name for short, single-stranded oligonucleotides. And so these oligonucleotides, they can fold into a diverse range of really intricate molecular structures. And so because they have these very specific structures, they can be designed to bind with really high affinity to proteins, peptides and small molecules. So this SOMA-SCAN Aptima technology uses this to its advantage and has a collection of these different Aptimas that specifically recognise a protein of interest and have on the other side a dual ability to also bind to uh, capture probes that enable quantification of the amount of protein in the sample. And what seems to be unique to the SOMA-SCAN technology is that the aptimers have a slow off rate and the technology has been designed such that they can detect up to 5,000 different proteins in a plasma sample. Considering we have 20,000 genes, 5,000 proteins is a pretty decent number. 
So with the technology in hand, the team then looked at the protein of the different individuals they had in their cohort. So by comparing the protein from people who are older to the individuals who are younger in their cohort, they could see some proteins that were significantly either higher in the older samples or lower in the older samples. So I've highlighted a few ones here. And just to also briefly point out, the full data set is available online. I'll put the link for that in the description. So some of the significant proteins that increase with age includes chlorostin, GDF15, MLN and SCARF2. And interestingly, they also saw CGA FSHB increase. So this was also noticed to be um, higher in females than in males, particularly because this is the fol follicle stimulating hormone. So it's very much um, female hormone related. But it's interesting that this is really significant and also demonstrates how there might be sex specific aging differences. But this is just showing the aging protein independent of sex. And so they also noticed an enrichment for proteins in blood related pathways. So given that they've noticed these changes in the proteome during aging, or at least increase of lifespan, how you know could this information be used to develop a predictive measure of someone's age based on their proteome in the plasma? A so-called proteomic aging clock. So using the plasma proteome from 2,817 individuals, the team developed a predictive model, which they then tested on 1,446 individuals. And they managed to develop an accurate model using only 373 proteins. And interestingly, what they noticed was some individuals that were predicted to have a lower biological age than their actual age also performs better in physical and cognitive tests. So this seems to prove that the protein does have the information to be able to predict a biological age. And to further enhance their data set, they also looked at the plasma protein of mice as well. And what they noticed was there were conserved proteins, 46 in particular, that were conserved aging proteins in both the humans and mice plasma proteins. And you can see these 46 conserved proteins here. I've highlighted both GDF11 and GDF15 because I mentioned them both earlier. But one of the striking things you can see from this data set is that when these proteins change throughout age from young to old, and whether or not they go up or down in levels, you can see that it, you know the changes aren't occurring simultaneously. Globally, you have an undulating pattern. This can also be seen more clearly if I draw out how the trajectories of the different proteins change during age. So you can see that some go up, some go down, but they also do this at different times and at different rates. But despite the differences, the different trajectories of the proteins can be grouped into eight different clusters. And globally, what the different clusters show is that most plasma protein changes across the lifespan were nonlinear. And the number of proteins in each cluster ranged from only 8 to more than 1,000 proteins in the cluster. So I've drawn out cluster 7 and cluster 8 here. So we can see that cluster 7 seems to show this kind of exponential increase as you get older, whereas cluster 8 goes down in terms of the protein levels during age. And by looking at the pathways associated with the proteins in the group. In cluster 7, they see an association with extracellular space, and in cluster 8, they see a, an association with receptor activity. So in this case, they're seeing a decrease in receptor activity. And this is interesting, and it kind of shows that there are these distinct changes in biological processes that seem to be happening during lifespan. But the team wanted to dig a little bit deeper into these changes. So what they did was a differential expression sliding window analysis. So as you can see here, what they did was they looked at the proteome at specific intervals and compared them. So as I've drawn here, they use a window of 20 years and they compare the proteomes in two groups that are 10 years apart. So let's say 35 to 45 years, comparing that to 45 to 55 years. And then it's called sliding window because you just do this in increments of one year 
up and down the different ages. And so the idea behind this analysis was to try and detect changes at particular stages of life. So when are most of these changes in the pregame occurring? What are the sequential effects? So they did this, and here's a graph I drew earlier. And what they saw was they saw that there were these three peaks of significant pregame changes throughout age. And these three peaks occurred at around 34, 60 and 78 years of age respectively. And so by then looking at the associations of the proteins in the different peaks, they can see that the peak at 60 years shows associations with hormonal activity, binding functions and blood pathways. And blood pathways also came up in the peak at around 78 years, um, but also bone morphogenetic protein signalling, so that's BMP signalling. And what, what this really does show is that this, the ageing process that's detected from the plasma proteome shows that ageing is dynamic, it's a non-linear process, and that you can see these, these waves of changes. And that's really interesting and kind of fascinating about understanding the ageing process. And finally, by looking at the proteins and comparing them to known genetic risk factors for ageing and age-associated diseases, they saw that more of the proteins were associated with genetic factors in the younger peak, whereas the older peaks, more of the proteins were soft coding or due to environmental factors. But the key take home really is that ageing is dynamic and at least in the proteome shows these waves of changes, these undulating patterns you might say. So next time you see a flag waving in the wind, you can go, look, that flag is undulating like the human plasma ageing proteome. You'll sound pretty cool, guaranteed. <laughs> well, well, not guaranteed. But I hope you will agree that there does seem to be promise for the proteome to be able to predict your biological age. And as always, thanks for listening.